Good morning and welcome to St. Raphael's Parish on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Our opening hymn is number 353, Again We Keep This Solemn Fast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked to Ebed and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him, not as, not as man does God see, but man sees the appearance. But the Lord looks into his heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. 
We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready and a youth handsome to behold. And making a splendid appearance, the Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of the oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me. spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is no and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Good morning. In St. John's Gospel, what is on the surface is never fully the true meaning of what John is trying to express in his Gospel. We have the story today, the account of the man born blind, the physical condition and Jesus miraculously heals him. But there is a blindness that, if we are honest, we all have at one time or another. And it certainly afflicted the Pharisees today. And that is a blindness of the heart, a spiritual blindness. And this blindness prevents each one of us from seeing God work in our midst and in our lives. 
And the very sad thing about this is that it afflicts people like you and me that know better. We know that God is at work in creation and in our lives. And yet, for one reason or another, we forget about that. We forget that each of us is made in the image and likeness of God. Yet sometimes we cannot see that in one another. We know that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And very often we cannot see that image in ourselves. God is doing something with and through Jesus. And that is, he is bringing healing and wholeness to all of us. And yet, we, if we are again honest with ourselves, find it so very difficult to believe that we are worthy of God's healing, that we are worthy of God's love. And so as we reach this halfway point in the season of Lent, we might reflect for ourselves on the following. How might God be at work in my life? Is there a possibility that during the past week I might have been blind to seeing God in another or God at work? And where do I see God present and at work in my life? Our Lenten practices, our devotion, our faith, our worship together is meant to sharpen the vision of the eyes of our heart, our spiritual vision. And yet, very often, we close the eyes of our heart to each other and to ourselves. But as Jesus did in today's gospel, he always takes the initiative himself without being asked to bring us healing and love. Let us pray that this Eucharist which we celebrate today and together may help us to open the eyes of our hearts to see the marvelous ways and the many ways in which God is active in our lives and in the lives of our community.
Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has spoken to the heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, we turn to God with our needs and the needs of our community. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our church and parish community, that we may share the vision of gospel compassion and mercy in our life together, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops, priests, ministers, and religious educators that God's work may show forth in their ministry among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That like the man born blind, we, we will allow Jesus to open our eyes and hearts to his will and to inspire more men and women to respond to his call to serve him and his church as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. For the Benedictine monks of St. Anselm Abbey, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for God's comfort and healing today, for those who are sick, whose names are listed on our prayer line, and for our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our own intentions. For these intentions, and for the late Laurent Cody, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Please also pray for the repose of the soul of our parishioner, Becky Vinson, who died on Friday after a very brief illness. Becky and her husband, John, and daughter, Elizabeth, are very active and dedicated members of our parish. So let us pray that Becky's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed may mercifully go to heaven and that John and his family are consoled at this time. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear, O God, the prayers you have inspired us to ask in faith, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May I ask you to be seated for a brief and important <coughs> announcement. Good morning. My name is Sebastian Sisko. I'm a fifth grade basketball player at St. Benedict Academy. Our team won the CYO Catholic Schools Championship and have the honor of representing the Diocese of Manchester at a regional tournament in Providence, Rhode Island. We are holding a raffle to raise money for the trip. Tickets are $10 each for a grand prize of $250. I'll be at the table in the back if anyone wants to buy one or more than one ticket. Thank you. Please stand. And also, I invite you to please take home a copy of the bulletin. And also, next Sunday, following this Mass, we'll have a parish breakfast uh, in the, lower, the parish hall downstairs to honor the many years, um, to say thanks and gratitude and thanksgiving for the many years of service of Teresa Dame and Doreen Turner to our parish, but especially uh, to our neighbors in need, and to the young people of our parish. So please join us then. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.